so as I say, we're uh, we're going through your role of honor, I guess. You're a top five offensive rookies uh, this week, Mike. We, wa we wanted to do it after, I guess, uh, the two rookie quarterbacks went head to head last Thursday night and Thursday night football between uh, the Jets and the Browns. Uh, so I guess we'll, we'll go for, from five to one here, uh, Mike. So at number five, you've got uh, Sam Darnold. At number four, you've got Saquon Barkley. At number three, you've got Calvin Ridley. At number two, we've got Quentin Nelson. And at number one, it's a new boy, finally, and I think he's going to be QB1 for her at the Cleveland Browns, is uh, Baker Mayfield. Yeah, I mean, 32 minutes of play in the NFL, and he's already headed for the Hall of Fame. It's, yeah. it's amazing. Um, you can't judge these guys, really, um, on, on this three games production, but uh, Mayfield really looked like what I thought he would look like coming out of college, which is kind of the upside of him was a Drew Brees. And he, he showed a lot of those same kind of qualities. Uh, good vision downfield, real, real good accuracy. They, they, played, they played so much better when he came in. And I kept saying, or I keep saying, Cleveland's got the, the quality on the team to be, a, say, an 8-8 eight eight team. Um, they're in a tough division. There's going to be a lot of um, good defenses that he's going to face. But I think Mayfield's he's got a good shot at it now, better than, than the other three rookie quarterbacks who – are, are probably all going to be in worse situations. Sam Darnold's at five because he's starting. He'll get better as the year goes on. The Jets are not that bad. They've got some talent. But we also saw the first appearance of Josh Rosen in Arizona. Um, we saw Josh, Josh Allen have his first good game for Buffalo. And, you know, both those guys uh, also will, I think, be the long-term starters for their teams. The problem is, as happens in the NFL draft, the best quarterbacks tend to go to the worst teams, which makes mm. their life harder. And and you see the difference sort of with Patrick Mahomes this year yeah. as he sat for a year in Kansas City. And and the thing is, not that sitting per se is good, but what it does do is teach you how to learn about the game and to read defenses and things like that. And so he comes in, I think, a lot more mature than a rookie is. And, you know, you, you think of Josh Allen coming from Wyoming, um, which is – sort of in the second tier of the top tier of college football. He doesn't see the kind of defenses he's going to see mm. in the NFL, and that's the big part of the learning curve. But, you know, I, I picked preseason Saquon Barkley because a running back in the Giants' offense was going to have the chance to play right from day one all season long and run up some big numbers, and he still can do that. Um, he's on track to do to do that. So he's, he's probably got a good shot. Quentin Nelson has no shot because he's a, he's a guard. Um, but he's just playing like a veteran guard and, and, and really good. And we saw Calvin Ridley have a three-touchdown game this week. Um, in that offense in Atlanta, he's got a chance to have a really huge year as, as uh, people have to play Julio Jones. There's also Mohamed Sanu. Uh, they need a red zone target, which is what he's already become. And the advantage for someone like him or, or another receiver like Dallas Goddard, the tight end in Philadelphia, or Christian Kirk, who, who, who's at – well, Kirk's at Arizona, so forget I said that. Hmm. But um, they come in to good teams – so if they find a role, they have a chance to be really good. Now, not necessarily to put up huge numbers, but I think Ridley does. So he would be my dark horse at that rookie of the year. Just on the, the rookie quarterbacks, it makes a lot of sense that, you know, naturally the, the highest draft are going to go to a crap team and therefore they're going to look a lot worse than they potentially are. But just in terms of learning the playbook, is it usually accepted that between the draft and September, there is enough time for each and every player to learn the offensive playbook oh, off oh, by heart? Yeah, you're, they're, they're able to hit you're, the running usually? you're absolutely right. Yeah, you're absolutely right. That's the easy, that's the relatively easy part. Okay. Uh, the hard part is is learning how to adjust what you have learned to what you see on the field. And you know, one of the things that people often overlook when you talk because you're you're concentrating on things like arm strength and escapability, but the really great quarterbacks make most of the play before the ball is snapped because they see the way the defense is aligned and they know where they're going to go. And in a lot of offenses, a lot of the sophisticated offenses in the league, the routes that the receivers run are option routes where, depending on what kind of defense they're seeing, um, the receiver's going to run a different route. And I say route and route interchangeably. Um, and um, so the receiver and the quarterback have to be on the same page. And for a young quarterback, it's sometimes he has to make that read right every time. Yeah. Uh, and and hoping that the receiver will do that, and and that's the real that's the real hard part of the learning curve. Um, the adjustment to the speed of the game 
comes eventually regardless. But if you don't understand what you're seeing, that's that's the hard thing. Yeah, so uh, Baker Mayfield, Mike Carlson's number one rookie uh, for 2018. Like, how, how far can this guy go? I know, he, like, we're literally basing it off Thursday night at the fact that he was picked number one in the draft. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, there's huge hype. There is form there from college. Like, I was personally a, a big Baker fan as soon as on draft night he replicated that Brett Favre picture, and I think that just showed a load of confidence. I think he's he's got uh, like he's got a, like a real nice cockiness to him. I think I think it's fair to say that, Mike. Like, how high is this guy's bar? Is he potentially Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers level? I, I, like I said, I think he's potentially Drew Brees. Drew Brees um, yeah. he, he's got a, a very similar skill set. And coming out of college, he had a lot of experience as a starter, which is a good thing. Um, it, it, it helps you to evaluate him better. His completion percentage was always high. They play in a wide open uh, style of ball, even at, at Oklahoma, or as well, especially at Oklahoma in, in the Big 12. Um, the defenses are better that they're facing, but but still, it, it's relatively easy for a quarterback to read and see what's going on. But everything pointed to him being successful, except the fact that he's bare, you know just six feet tall, mm. and that puts off some teams automatically. But Drew Brees is you know listed, I think, at six one, but he's basically just six feet tall, uh, and a quarterback who can get rid of the ball quickly, who knows what he's seeing, who who can read react release um is what mayfield is and as long as hugh jackson doesn't ruin him in the next uh six games or eight games or whatever i think he'll he'll be doing pretty well yeah let, let, let's hope that doesn't happen uh, just a, a couple of quick points uh, from the weekend mike patrick mahomes or showtime mahomes as he's been christened by i think travis kelsey uh, coined that phrase in the wake of the game kelsey was also saying that i think he was asked by an espn reporter if Mahomes is indeed from planet Earth, and he did confirm that he is indeed from the same planet as us. <laughs> He's been unbelievable, as you say. He, he sat all last season. I think he played uh, in Week 17 last year. They beat the 49ers 38-27 on Sunday. They're now 3-0. and Just talk to us about this performance on Sunday, because this is the one which really moved him into kind of a stratospheric level. I know he, he beat, was it Peyton Manning's record of, I think it was 12 touchdown passes in the opening three games or something like that, and he's now on yeah. 13. So, uh, yeah. you, you, like, you can basically find a statistic to suit your argument in every case when it comes to NFL that's so statistics-based. <laughs> but it seems that Patrick Mahomes is the real deal. Yeah, I, I think so. And like I said, I think he benefited from not having to, to rush in and play last year. He's, he's now knows the defense. He's watched, he's watched defenses every week for a year. Uh, without having the pressure of having to beat them, and now he's come in. He's got amazing natural talents as well. Um, some one of his high school coaches sent uh, Rob Rang a, a video of him in high school doing exactly what he did in the the real highlight of the game. He he was scrambling to his right, turned around uh, to his left, turned around and ran to his right. And as he was running, he flicked the ball with his wrist that traveled about 30 yards between two defenders and into the receiver's hand in the end zone. And earlier that day, this coach had sent Rob Rang a video of him doing exactly the same thing, but with the sides of the field reversed when he was in high school and he was 16 years old. And it was the same flick of the wrist, the same 30 yards zip on the ball. Um, his father was a major league baseball pitcher uh, he's obviously inherited genetic the genetic uh, coding in his arm to make to make it really strong. He's very heady. Um, he's in a great system. Andy Reid's taken over the play calling again. Um, the head coach in Kansas City, and I think they're you know they're on the same page. They're trying to make things uh, easy for Travis Kelsey, and they've got weapons. The Chiefs have so many weapons where they can create mismatches with uh travis kelsey on 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 safeties or linebackers tyreek hill who's who's like a very explosive uh very fast player that they stretch defenses out and that's going to make mahomes life e even easier the chiefs have no defense to speak of and that's going to be their problem they can't win every game in a mm. in a 40 to 30 shootout but uh you know as long as they are doing it mahomes, as long as mahomes can put 30 or more on the board they'll be in every game yeah, absolutely. They're one of the most exciting teams to watch in football at the moment. Uh, I did want to get your take uh, on the general tackle laws in uh, the NFL at the moment. We spoke a little bit about this after week one when it became apparent how stringent the referees are going to be on this. But Clay Matthews of Green Bay was speaking after the weekend saying, unfortunately, this league is going in a direction uh, that I think a lot of people don't like. I think they're getting soft. The only thing hard about this league is the fines that they levy down on guys like me who play the game hard. I don't know. I'm just going to keep playing hard. Maybe now pass rushers and guys getting after the quarterback, you just have to attack the ball. I've been playing this game for over 20 years. That's how you tackle. So we'll see. I mean, something's got to change.
because the league's not. Is something going to change here, Mike? It seems that there's a lot of people very, very unhappy with how these uh, laws have been applied. Yeah, it's funny. I, I was listening to uh, Mike Pereira and Dean Blandino, who were both head of officials for the NFL, and they're now both working uh, for television. And they were saying that they had been in the com competition committee meeting and, and or talking to them, and, and that most of the competition committee wants a change. Now, the strange thing is, first week of preseason, it was all about helmet hits. And, and what was or wasn't a legal hit that's that's died down and that that so far has been not a problem um i mean it's still a problem with helmet hits that go uncalled but there haven't been any controversial ones the problem as you've said is with quarterback hits and mm -hmm. clay matthews two two weeks in a row has been pretty much done a textbook tackle sacking a quarterback and been called for you with coming down with the full weight of his body on the quarterback now unless you teach players levitation there's very few ways of avoiding doing that and the law or the interpretation as it was put out to the referees this year said violent or unnecessary uh when putting weight on the body and we can see that because usually it involves a second motion um and gakwe on tom brady in, in week two first series forklifted him and then did you were talking wwf before he did what wrestlers do when they put their feet on the ropes to get extra leverage <laughs> he, he, he you could literally see him get those feet up and then to put extra extra weight on brady as he fall that wasn't called but when i put that opposite matthews and that was called it made no sense at all and, and the point that matthews is making if it's all one motion and yeah. you're doing a tackling motion and you're not hitting him late, and you're not hitting him with your head, and you're not hitting him in the head, you're going to fall on him. And mm -hmm. it, you know, unless you make an effort to sort of put extra force into that, which is usually easily recognizable, you shouldn't be penalized. And I think that's going to – the problem with the NFL is they tend to be stubborn in, in making these, these kind of changes or changes of emphasis that they tell the referees to do. So um, it may be a while before they work that out, but they had said that they thought it was a textbook definition of the penalty and they were going to put it into the uh, film that they put out every week to explain refereeing decisions. They didn't. Mm. Um, so, so we'll see. I, and I think when you look at it, you know, Clay Matthews has, is absolutely right. Uh, and, you know, and even the quarterback he sacked, said that he was right. He didn't think it was a, a violent hit. And, and there was one on Aaron Rodgers by um, Kendricks the week before um, in Minnesota, and Rodgers said he didn't think it was a violent hit. You know, it, it, it's the game, um, yeah. as he said. I don't know if the game is getting soft per se, but they're, they're trying to keep players safe, and it's very hard to take a very physical game and um, decide exactly where to draw the line on what is and isn't too physical. Yeah. It's easier in wrestling. It's easier in wrestling. <laughs> if I'd known you were talking WWE, I would have worn my Terry Funk, uh, my Terry Funk Funk U T-shirt instead of my uh, Wesley and Lacrosse T-shirt in, in solidarity <laughs> with Bill Belichick, whose season seems to be falling apart. Uh, but it, it often does in the first four games of the season. Is Terry Funk your favorite wrestler? To absolutely, Terry Funk and Manami Toyota who was a Japanese woman wrestler in the 90s. Uh, she was the best performer I've ever seen. But but Funk is Funk is just a legend. Right. You're, you're going to have to come over and go to OTT Wrestling with us. We've, uh, we're going to go ahead next OTT. week. Apparently, it's even better than the WWE. So I'll uh, tell you. I'll tell you. I'll do that in an instant. Nice one. Well, the invite is intended. Uh, Michael in studio here is delighted to have you over. Uh, we're, we're out of time, Mike. Uh, unfortunately, we're not going to be able to talk about the Buffalo Bills, but I, I take it that they're going to win the Super Bowl. So, uh, Mike Carlson, thank you so much. <laughs> I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't put a bet on it, but um, <laughs> if you want to believe, you can believe. Thanks, thanks, Mike. Uh, Mike Carlson there on the line with us every week chatting about the NFL. Uh, Buffalo Bills, of course, beating the Minnesota Vikings at the weekend, hammering them. And uh, Josh Allen with uh, a pretty good performance.